here's the one and only, the first lady of British comedy, June Whitfield. <laughs> Oh, I must say, in those clips, which were terrific, you were getting all the laughs. Well, it's sort of the seven ages of June, isn't it, really? <laughs> it goes back uh, quite a long way. Did you always you. regard yourself, though, as the feed, the foil for all these uh, comics? Yes, I, that's the way I seem to have started and uh, really the way I went on. I mean, I can't remember whether it was Frankie Howard or, or whether it was Roy Hudd, but w one of them said, you know, what you really are is sort of comics tart. I said, oh, thanks. <laughs> And actually quite sad when you look at some clips like that, to see that so many of them have gone. Isn't it sad? Well, my theory is that, of course, uh, the stress is with the comics. Um, you know, I've been lucky that I've always been the one who says the line before the funny line. And, uh, but when, you're, when, you're, when you reach the heights that uh, those comics have reached, um, you know, there's only one way to go. Mm. And they have to keep up the pressure and... Uh, I think, sadly, that's what does it. Mind you, your career is on the up and up. I mean, absolutely <laughs> fabulous, enormous wow. publicity, great reaction. When you first saw the script, did you really want to do it because it was just so outrageous? Well, I fell about. I, I thought it was one of the funniest things I've ever read. And it's, I'm deeply grateful to Jennifer, particularly, for writing in mother because uh, it's really made me a sort of born-again actress you know <laughs> and as mother sort of growing in terms of the character do you find oh i don't know she's I getting stronger so. in the series no i i think she'll probably um stick to the the odd one-liners you know but uh, jennifer makes them pretty uh, pretty telling doesn't she like that one that you just showed the clip in america of course has gone down exceptionally well are you surprised it in has. a way because america can be very very rigid and quite prissy in a way about the type of comedy they put on their screens absolutely but i think that they're changing a bit i think that they are uh, you know in inserting more um slightly not saucy exactly i don't know what you'd call it anarchic comedy i don't know and are you enjoying all the attention that that's bringing Oh, yes. Um, it's lovely to be asked to do things. You know, people always say, you know, when are you going to retire? And I say, well, actresses don't really retire. They get retired. You know, you retire when the phone stops ringing, really. And it, touch wood. I don't think it's ever going to stop ringing for you. But is it very well, different working with girls, uh, you know, in Ab Fab as opposed to all the male comics? Not really. No, I, I, I always have the theory that either you think what you're doing is funny or it isn't. And it really doesn't matter who's doing it. I mean, those two chaps you've just been talking to, I think, are absolutely hysterical. Maybe make me fall about it. <laughs> Marvellous. So the girls in the next series are going to age a bit. So. Uh, only, I think, in one episode, probably the final episode. And you just have to see them. When Jennifer and Joanna Lumley uh, age 25 years, it is pretty horrendous. <laughs> no doubt Patsy's still there with a well, flag. Well, the, in the makeup room, uh, Jennifer, I think, had to be remade up about three times because she was laughing so much. <laughs> she, you know, they, they have gone for every bad bit that happens in, in older age. So apart from all the television work that you're doing now, obviously with Ab Fab, the radio continues very much the way with you the started With the headlines, yes, course. of course, with Roy Hard and, and Chris Emmett. That's, uh, yes, every Thursday, folks. It's, um, that's great fun because you get to play all kinds of characters that you don't look like, you know. And I've just done another um, Miss Marple for Radio 4 for next year. And... Uh, then I suppose it's, it's, it's pantomime, Gloria, and you know all about the, that. The, the fairy, yeah. fairy godmother you're playing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just going back to the radio, though, you, yeah. I mean, for years now you've been developing lots of voices. F, for example. Oh, going... yes. Yes. Mind you, I think perhaps she's about an octave lower now than she <laughs> used to be. <laughs> but uh, she's been revived, of course, as, uh, because when uh, there was John Major and Norma Major, and nobody really knew what Norma's voice was like, and over the years, people have always said, you know, do eth, do eth. And I thought, no, you can't, can't do eth for everything. But for Norma, eth was revived. So, oh, Ron has now become, oh, John. <laughs> <laughs> and you're Mrs. T, because you have to put Ms. Mrs. Thatcher into the headlines. Oh, well, yes. Well, it was very, very sad when <laughs> she retired, because, you know, one, one lost. But she does come back occasionally, which is very nice. <laughs> yes. 
So uh, every week do you get a chance to, uh, to do voices, do impressions of some sort? Oh, of some sort, yes. One of my favourites is uh, there's a lovely old girl who uh, keeps ringing up. And uh, when the, and they say, hello, Hudline's here. And you get a big silence and then she says, hello? <laughs> and then they say, Hudline's here. He was, hello? <laughs> it just sort of goes on for hours, you know. And then she says something daft at the end. Actually, what amazes me, though, I mean, we've been talking today about the radio having been there for just a year or two, mm. you know, Ab Fab, and, and you also teamed up with Julian Clary. I would have thought that was the most unlikely pairing imaginable. How did, well, how did that turn out? All that was just a, an episode in, in his show, which it wasn't exactly a send-up of Terry and June, but it was Terry and Julian, wasn't it? And uh, I was asked to do this, and it involved uh, chasing Julian around a sofa, really. <laughs> and I thought, well, you know, I've chased Arthur Askey around sofas, <laughs> Frankie Howard I've chased around sofas. Mm. And oh, there was a little story about that, too, because um, during that clip, uh, that sketch, I was this mad woman who kept saying to him, you know, kiss me, kiss me, and every time he came towards me, I said, don't touch me. But at one point, early on, I had my hand around the back of his neck and I was sort of playing with his hair, you know, and he said, um, he said, I think it might be better if you just, uh, you know, kept your, kept your head on my shoulder, sort of thing. <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry about the hair. I must have been the only person in the world who didn't know that Frankie Howard's hair was not his own. <laughs> I think you said lucky you weren't doing it to Alvin Stardust. But that ah. Gina, <laughs> yeah. it's always a delight to see you. Thank you very much indeed for joining Lovely us. Lovely to be Gina, here. Thank you. you very much.